channel Gucci. Stay golden. Today we will be discussing the atomic theory and all of the people who helped discover it. The atom is a particle indivisible in chemical changes. Our scientists of topic are Democritus, Aristotle, Lavoisier, Krauss, John Dalton, William Crookes, Henry Bricoul, the Curie family, J.J. Thompson, Robert Millikan, Ernest Rutherford, Niles Bohr, James Chardwick, and Erwin Schrodinger. Oh, yes, that's what that says. <laughs> now to our interviewer, Kristen, on Democritus, Aristotle, Lavoisier, Krauss, and John Dalton. Enjoy! Hello, and welcome to What's Your Info? Today we will be talking to Aristotle and Democritus to explain how their relationships to the atomic theory. So, Democritus, tell us about your life. Well, you must know, around 430 BC, quite a while back, I made a crazy scientific discovery when I observed that atoms are building blocks for all things and they are extremely they are indivisible and differ only by shape and arrangement. I also started to frog myself. I also stated that atoms cannot be destroyed and they can only correspond to the substance they make. Very interesting. I'll make sure to remember that. So, now to Aristotle. So, Aristotle, tell me about yourself. Well, if you must know, well, I don't believe atoms are of different sizes and have regular geometric shapes, which contradicts society's belief. Ha! I developed the theory that all matter consists of four elements, earth, air, water, and fire. I also observed four qualities, dryness, hotness, which is me, coldness, her, and moisture. The fire was dry and hot. The water was moist and cold, and so on. <laughs> My theory also had two forces, conflicted and harmony. The conflicted was to cause bad things, me. Harmony was to cause good things, not her. Those were some of my amazing swing on discoveries. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Kristen. The next three scientists that Kristen will be interviewing are Antoine Lavoisier, Joseph Proust, and John Dalton. Now back to you, Kristen. Thank you, Jackie. The first scientist I will be interviewing right now is Antoine Lavoisier. Now tell me about yourself. Yes, I do not need an introduction because I am the Antoine Lavoisier. One day, I was experimenting with different types of gases, and I discovered oxygen and hydrogen, and the names, they just stuck. When some of the substances burned, I noticed that the loss in mass was due to the gas molecules escaping into the atmosphere, and I established the law of conservation of mass. I concluded that a chemical the total mass of a material present before a chemical reaction remains. It remains unaltered after the chemical reaction. Very interesting. Thank you. There's my cat! <laughs> Hello! Next up is Mr. Joseph Proust. And Mr. Proust, how are you this evening? Kristen! How are you, my darling? I missed you. I'm great! I am great! And how about you? Yes, okay. I am... In 1799, I was studying Sugar composition, a very sweet subject. This ended up leading into the law of conf con constant <laughs> matter, which ended up being a law of definite proportions. But anyway, this stated that no matter how 
or why a compound is made or how much that is, the reaction will always combine and they serve with. I love all of you. You are my sweet ladybug. Goodbye. Thank you. I will take this back. I have to meet someone at three. <laughs> Goodbye. Good. Thank you, Mr. Proust. And now on to John Dalton. Hello, Mr. Hello, John love. Dalton. Hello. Now, please tell us why you are such a big part of the atomic theory. Um, I propose the law of multiple proportions. This law led right to the proposal of the atomic theory in 1803. I also developed the concept of the mole. This is a mole. It's, it's, I promise it's a mole. I also propose a symbol, a system of symbols, to represent atoms of different elements. Oh, and not to forget, I came up with the four postulates. One, all matter is made up of indivisible, indestructible protons called atoms. Two, all atoms are given an element identical, both in mass and proportions. Three, compounds form when atoms of different elements combine in ratios of small whole numbers. And four, elements and compounds are composed of definite arrangements of atoms. Chemical change occurs when the atom arrays are rearranged. I have an, a diagram of the atomic. Show her love. Uh, it shows the protons, electrons, neutrons, and the nucleus in this. Here, do my jiggy. Do you cut? Cut. What is this? You say okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nice saying you. I love. I love Thank you. Oh, oh, no. Have a mole. Mole. <laughs> Kristen for that wonderful interview with those scientists. Now you, Jackie, for your to interview your scientists. Can't wait to see what's ahead. Hope it's awesome. Stay golden. I am here with Mr. William Crooks. Please tell us about yourself, Mr. Crooks. Hello, Jacqueline. It's Jackie. Well, I had a private laboratory in London, and I researched the electrical discharges through a rarefied gas which led me to observe the dark space around the cathode, which society now calls the Crookes dark space. I demonstrated how the cathode rays traveled in straight lines, and they produced phosphorescence and heat when it struck a certain material. I also invented many devices so that I could study the behavior of the cathode rays. Unfortunately, my theory of radiant matter was proven incorrect. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Groves. That was nice talking to you. You're welcome. Next time, we will be interviewing... Who's that? Henry Burkwell! Yeah, now here with Henry Burkwell. How are you, Henry? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Can you please explain to us some of your major accomplishments? My first orientation of work was on the plane polarization of light. I discovered the phosphorescence and the absorption of light by crystals. I also discovered natural radioactivity. I investigated to see if there was any kind of connection between x-rays and the supernaturally occurring phosphorescence. My father gave me a supply of uranium, salts, and rich phosphorus on exposure to light. I discovered the property of the Newtonium atom. I made the discovery of spontaneous radioactivity, and I was awarded one half of the Nobel Prize for Physics. They gave me the other half to Pierre and Marie Curie, who you will be speaking to next. Well, thank you very much for that information. Next is Marie and Pierre Curie. You're welcome. Okay. I am here with Pierre and Marie Curie. I took them out of their insane asylum just so that they could do today's interview for you viewers. How are you guys? Good, okay. Can you please explain to me your astonishing advancements in today's scientific community? Go ahead, honey. Tell them. Well, I invented the term 
radioactivity, and I discovered the two elements, radium and polonium. I was the first person to win the Nobel Prize mm -hmm. twice. I published the trait de radioactivité. And Pierre? Yes. When did you fall in love with Marie? Oh. <laughs> and I saw she had the sparkle in her eye, the, the golden sunshine array of science in her eye. Anyways, I married her because she had a love for science. <laughs> I live for studying research about crystals and the magnetic properties of bodies at different temperatures. I discovered piezoelectricity. Also, it is when a difference in electrical <coughs> frog in my throat. <coughs> Excuse me. Electrical potentials seen when my chemical stresses are applied on certain crystals. Marie persuaded me to submit my document on the thesis, which concerns different types of magnetism. Wait a second. It's magnetism. I just got you. Huh. And shows the connection between temperature and magnetism. Wow. That's very incredible. Well, I bet there's a lot more that you guys have discovered. Well, that's it for today on Jackie's Corner. Now back to the anchors. Bye bye. Well, that was a very interesting interview. Thanks. It was pretty weird. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> What's what do you mean? They, they, they were radioactive, they created that? Now for Riley's interview on her scientists. Hope it's worthwhile. Welcome to the spooky rendition of the interviews with the most famous three scientists. We bring you this broadcast live from where, at the death of these three scientists, they have risen from the grave. Supposedly, it is the spookiest scene alive, and they only come out when it's Halloween. <laughs> No trespassing is allowed until now. <gasps> the ghost of Niels Bohr. Is that truly him? <laughs> I'm Niels Bohr. I won the Nobel Prize and studied under your threat. Being as cool as I am, I published a model of the atomic theory structure which introduced the theory of electron traveling in orbits around the atom's nucleus. I introduced the idea that an electron could drop from a higher energy or orbit from a lower one, emitting a photon of this real? Cut. Something terrible has just occurred. I don't know where the other two scientists are. I lost them. They could be anywhere. They could pop out of nowhere at any given moment. I saw you. Ah! Oh. Are you getting this? It's over there. It's over there. It's over there. It's moving. It's moving. To get things straight, I am straight. I proved the existence of the elementary particle without an electrical charge and a fundamental building block of the atom's nucleus. <laughs> I solved the jigsaw puzzle of the atoms. I discovered nuclear fission when uranium is combined with neutrons, which led to the creation of the nuclear weapons and power production. You. Can I take a picture with you? Come on, smile! One, two, three, smile! Okay. I get closer and closer. I realize he must have been a real geek in high school. My name is Erwin Schrodinger. I used to study botany, which resulted on plant botanity. A lot of my experiments dealt with specific heat of solids, of thermodynamics, and the atomic spectra. I also was interested in physiological studies of colors. 
I discovered and created the Schrodinger wave equation. I believe that atomic spectra should be determined by the Egan value problem and for all my work, I then won a Nobel Prize. Fascinating. Zombies. I just gotta get closer. These scientist guys, they're really smart up here. I mean, really smart. They discovered all these new theories. Heck, all I discovered was I'm at a park. Anyways, that's probably why they call it Ghost Park though. They're pretty scary. If I hadn't gotten this cut, I probably would be so afraid of them. You never know what could be dwelling here. At any given moment, they could attack you. Thank God I haven't been attacked. It was a very scary process. Thought I wouldn't make it out alive. Anyways, thanks for joining in to Channel 70. Hope you enjoyed. Stay Gucci, stay golden. You're supposed to stop watching. We tried really hard. Hope you enjoyed the movie. We're gonna shoot it here if we got too scared. JK. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy. And happy what? Halloween. Science rules. <laughs>